Okay, welcome to part three of session two. Uh, it, in, we've learned in uh, session or parts one and two of session two that you know, what it was that Adam and Eve did. And, uh, and we've learned what the phrase meant, the knowledge of good and evil, this thing that they did and, and what that idiom means. And now what we're going to do is take our knowledge of what that idiom means back into Genesis 2 and 3, and we're going to apply that knowledge and see what's going on. Okay, so we're going to reread it with the idiom in mind. So this is uh, Genesis 2, 15 through 17. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and tend it. The Lord God commanded the man saying, from any tree of the garden you may freely eat, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that is doing what is right in your own eyes instead of following the judgment of God, you shall not eat. For on that day that you eat from it, you will certainly die. Okay, so we see he's, he's telling him that you don't have the authority to, to do that. I reserve the authority to determine what is right and what is wrong. So then in Genesis 3, here's what's happening. Here's what they're doing. So the serpent comes along. He starts uh, tempting, you know, can you, you should not eat from the, any tree of the garden. She responds. She says, uh, verse three, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, that is doing what is right in your own eyes instead of following the uh, judgment of God, they're not, uh, um, they're not allowed to, to eat from it, right? You shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. Then the serpent says, you will certainly not die. Verse five, for God knows that on the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will become like God, knowing good and evil. How are they going to become like God? They're going to have the authority to determine what is right and what is wrong. They will be their own bosses. They will be able to make those kind of judgments and decisions, right? Instead of God, that's how they become like God. And um, so then and it goes on, verse six. Um, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took some of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband with her, and he ate. They rejected God's authority over them to determine and judge right from wrong uh, for self-determination. So this is the sin that they did, right? This last part. They rejected God's authority over them for self-determination, for their, for their own right. I have the knowledge of good and evil. Now. I have the right to, to judge and discern and make these sorts of right and wrong decisions. But then we see that that sin, now that we understand it, carries on throughout all of scripture. We see it in nearly every human and human institution ever since rejecting God's authority for their own. So some examples are in Genesis 4, 3 through 7, we see that, that Cain does this, right? So his uh, Abel's sacrifice is accepted by God's and Cain's is not. And so Cain becomes very angry. And then the Lord, verse 6, the Lord says to Cain, why are you angry? And why is your face gloomy? If you do well, Will your face not be cheerful? So that tells you he, he wasn't doing well, or he wasn't doing what God wanted him to do. And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door and its desires for you, but you must master it. It's really the same thing. He wasn't following God. He wasn't allowing God to determine right and wrong. He was going to determine what was right and wrong instead of listening to God. We see another record in Genesis 6, where all of mankind has become so wicked that God regrets that he made man and is going to wipe him off the face of the earth. But we also find that Noah in verse eight, um, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And, you know, why did he find favor? These are the records of the generation of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. So in other words, Noah remained under the authority of God. He did not go after his own authority and judgment and, you know, having this, this knowledge of good and evil. We see in 1 Samuel chapter 8, 
Um, this is pretty a pretty interesting record. I'll, I'll go ahead and read this. This is verses four through eight. Uh, then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah, and they said to him, Behold, you have grown old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the matter was displeasing in the sight of Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people regarding all that they say to you, because they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them, like all the deeds which they have done since the day that I brought them up from Egypt, even to this day, and that they have abandoned me and served other gods, so they are doing to you as well, right? And so we, we see this concept, the same thing that Adam and Eve, Eve were doing. They abandoned God as their king to make themselves their own king king, their own authority. And then in, uh, finally in Judges chapter 21, verses 25, this, this nice phrase, I think this is really, this is sort of the summation of it all. It says, in those days, there was no king in Israel, which is an interesting statement since we just read in 1 Samuel, which comes after this, that, that God was supposed to be their king. He was supposed to be their king, but they had rejected him as king. So there wasn't a king. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes, rather than having God as their king and doing what was right in God's eyes. That is the sin that Adam and Eve committed. And that is the sin that every single person practically just about has been doing ever since is, you know, just as that one man brought that sin into the world, rejecting God's authority to be king and to have the authority to judge and determine what's right and what's wrong and to obey him in that, then death came from that sin. And so death spread to all mankind because all sinned. All sinned by doing the same thing, going their own way and being their own determination, worshiping other gods and not, not being under the authority of Yahweh, who the creator of, of all of this. So this is the bad news, right? The bad news is that this sin that is pervasive, that leads to all other sins, the idea I reject God, I'm going to be my own authority, I'm going to decide what's right and wrong, and I just get to decide that. And I, whatever, whatever I say goes. Um, there's a famous phrase by... Um, a, I, don't, I don't remember if he was an atheist or a Satanist or something like that. It goes, all of, the, all of the laws contained in this, do what thou wilt, right? Which is exactly what they're, what we're talking about, right? And the bad news is that brought death to all of mankind. So now we can see why the good news is good news. The kingdom of God is good news because God has made a way to repair the breach between himself and humanity. He has made a way for people to return to his reign and rule. And so subsequently for us to have a way out of death and back into life. All right, so let's do a quick review. We learned in, in part three that Adam and Eve disobeyed God by rejecting his authority to rule, including determining right from wrong, we learned that that sin has been picked up, this, this sin has been picked up and committed by humanity ever since, rejecting God's authority, worshiping the creation, committing all kinds of, of acts of sexual immorality and murder and all these kinds of stuff that go against God's law. And I don't mean the Mosaic law, I'm talking about the, the what God wants. And, and everybody, pretty much, most people have been doing that ever since. And we learned that the sin of rejecting God's authority for man, especially our own, is punishable by death. And that's not just any death. That's punishable by permanent death. Being put to death and you're judged and that's it. And you're dead forever. You don't exist anymore. And finally, we learned that the good news is that God has made a way to overcome the problem of this death, this permanent death by returning to his authority. 
And so that's why it's good news is because we can get out of this. We look around and we see all the death and destruction and the hopelessness of, of you got a few decades at the most and then you're in the ground and that's it. And you're, you know, you're dealing with all this trouble in the world. And so how do we fix this problem? We fix this problem by returning to God's authority and through the good news, the kingdom of God, he has made a way. So next time we will learn the mechanism that God used to save people from death. How is God bringing about the kingdom of God? We'll learn that next time.